Hey guys, so we're up north, we're in Borough Bridge, Darren Sadler's gym, Absolute Fitness. We've got Britain's Strongest Man this weekend, which is going to be amazing. We're getting a quick workout in this evening. What are we doing today? A bit of deadlifting. That's not too bad, I can still deadlift a little bit. So cool. I was a bit worried, I kind of don't want to get too shown up. But oh, not by me, I'm how, sure. How's things for, uh, going for the weekend? It's great, yeah. Uh, we're organised. Um, obviously, there's always things to do before these shows, load the wagons, get everything ready, you know, kit, equipment, crew. Um, but yeah, it's all come together. It always comes together last minute. But yeah, excited about it. The athletes are all raring to go, so that's great. I think it's an amazing lineup. As as promoter, are you allowed to have like favourites or people who you think will win? Or you, you, you uh, quite... I try not to. I try to keep impartial. But I mean, yeah. I mean, everyone's got the favourites. You know, this show you got the Stoltmans, Bish, Hicksy, Mark Felix. You know, the guys that've been around a long time. You almost feel like a lot of them like maybe it's their time to win. You know, it's always nice to see someone that's put the groundwork in and sort of got up that roster and then got a win. It's an amazing lineup. You think you've got the two last Britain's Strongest Man winners, you've got the current World's Strongest yeah. Man, the current Europe's Strongest yeah. Man, and Mark Felix in there that's as well, it. who's, I think he's been on the podium the most times at Britain's Strongest Man. A couple of new guys as well, always nice to see that, just to see where they are against, you know, the uh, the guys that are at the top. End of the day, I think I worked out there was like six World's Strongest Man finalists in this show, which, which is, is massive. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. It's going to be an amazing show. I'll put you on the spot. Where can people um, get tickets? Giantslive.com. Giantslive.com. And if they can't get to it, they can watch it online? Live stream, yeah, on Facebook or on Official Strongman. Cool. Yeah. So make sure you guys watch it, whether you're in person or online. We're going to go have a workout, try and get a sweat, and see if we can roll back the years and still lift some weights. <laughs> been a while. I've been a British Swiss Masters, and I've got cancer. I'll turn up for that. Hey? 40 now. 41. I'm only 42. Can you do the world for me? Hey? Can you do the world for me? I know, I don't want really to fancy that though. Yeah. It's pretty strong enough. Yeah, it's like doing well. I must have done well as long as you can. I want something to my forearm. Like, even just gripping that hurts. Yeah, our excuses are coming out now. I know, I'm full of them. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I've retired. Yeah, we were sort of dodging injuries when we were competing, and now it's like we've definitely got injuries. It's, it's like since I stopped competing, there's no motivation to train. Yeah. So like, when you've got a, a, a goal, you can kind of ignore the pain. When, when there's no goal, you're just like, oh. <laughs> Back in yours and Darren's heyday, did you two train together much? Yeah, we used to train together quite a bit. I used to come up here and we've had some good old um, deadlift sessions together. Some event sessions as well at his yard. Uh, we lifted a little bit more than back then than we'll lift today. <laughs> I remember one session, Darren and myself were doing like two fifth, uh, sorry, 350, 360 for reps. It was a pretty cool session. I also remember coming up training here one week after breaking the British deadlift record. I did 433, I think, in the British Championships. And then I struggled to pull 300 kilos a week later here just because I was so spent from my central nervous system being screwed. The weights are heavier in Yorkshire. What's that? Yorkshire weights are heavier. Yeah, yeah. It was easier down south. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That would be you and Alexa in a couple of years. <laughs> yeah, why not? It feels heavy. Does it? Well, <laughs> I haven't deadlifted for a few weeks. What's from the bar? Like it's only 160. 160? Yeah. <laughs>
Yeah. 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 A long time. How long ago was 1997? So it's like 23, 24 years ago. That's crazy. Yeah. You've been doing it longer than anyone. Yeah. You don't look old thing. enough, Darren. Hey? You don't look old enough. Oh, no, he's still got his youthful look. They're going to stress, stress now. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Yeah, warm it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> when you pull like weight, you go, oh no. You know? <laughs> I sometimes have to do the same weight three or four times That's these days. I remember when I was younger, I just put 300 kilos on and lift it. Yeah. Didn't Bibby like press 180 without warming up or something? That's ridiculous. Right, we'll try 65, but then the deal is you're coming back down doing loads of reps for weeks now. 200 kilos next. Big weights. <laughs> Sound like a broken record, I know, so I'm not going to whinge about. Do you know what, though? For a lot of people, this is a big weight. I know. I've been I'm... struggling with training recently. Just because my focus is to lose some weight right now. I've got a lot of injuries that need attention to. I need surgery on my knee. I've got issues with my forearm, issues with my uh, shoulder, elbow, the bicep. So I'm just not. not loving I'm someone that likes having a goal to train for, and at the moment I don't have that strength-wise. I want to get till Christmas, lose some weight, and then maybe do some strength goals next year. Yeah, have you got any sort of plans? Right now, the goal is just to lose weight and get fitter for yeah. Christmas. I want to get down to about 130 kilos. Yeah, yeah. 140 now. So my biggest at 170. Yeah. So um, just get fitter and then maybe from after Christmas I might give myself a target, something to do. I love something to do. It's just time. Yeah. And, 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 and I know it sounds daft and whatever, you know what I mean? Because like, I've competed before, well, at a high level, obviously, at World Strongest Man. If you've never competed before, like, if even if I did the Masters, I feel like I'd want to be good because yeah. you're like, oh yeah, Darren's back and he's crap. Do you know what I mean? I'd rather just, and, and when I've trained before, because I've been trained for a show, should I say, I've trained as hard as I can, but I've got all these other giants' lives, and I felt like I couldn't get my best. It's not the same as when you were younger and you were just dedicated to that. I was just sitting around thing. waiting for World Strongest Man every yeah. year, you know. Yeah. Whereas That's, now it's a bit different, isn't it? It's exactly the same for me. I sort of have so many other things going, and I've lost a bit of that hunger that I used to have to be as good as I could possibly be. You can't do it forever, can you? No. Oh. What was your deadlift PB? Um, 400. 400. About four that when I was 116 kilos. Mm. Well, you were competing long before 400 was the norm as well, weren't oh, you? Yeah, for, yeah. I mean, then no, no one was pulling 400. No. It was, it was actually, I think, when Lars, Lars had the world record actually in Stronger. Yeah. Around that area. Yeah. Well, yeah. Like that we both did in London. Yeah. Was, yeah. We both trained quite a bit together for that. Yeah. After the 105, so it was quite a bit late, isn't it? What do you weigh now? About the same, about between 115 and 120, usually. You're very tanned, Lars. Yeah. I'm always tanned. On my <laughs> you look like... Not as tanned as you, with your fake tan. <laughs> when we were in Dubai, walked into my hotel room, 
She's in there with this woman tanning her. Right. <laughs> what the hell's going on? You're in Dubai for crying out loud. You can get yeah, a tan going outside. Yeah. <laughs> is. I didn't have time to look. <laughs> 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 Do you want to borrow some straps? No, I've got some there. Let's try and hold off. That's good, mate. Solid. Two, two. Uh, Jack, are you going to go for the 65 then, yeah? Yeah. Think about it. Right. We'll make sure it all matches. <laughs> we're going for PB and it's going to be on camera. Well, yeah. What's that? Two and a half. Two and a half, yeah. Okay, then, buddy. Come on, mate, let's go. Nice and tight. Big pull. Yes. Squeeze through. Well done, mate. Relax. Well done. So that's, that's okay, but you feel a bit heavy. Yeah. That's, that's about as much as I want yeah, you to go. You want to go heavy, well done, mate. Yeah. Good stuff. Well done. Well, that's good for it. He's 11 years old. It's good. Yeah, you're right. It's like technique is more important than when it goes to big weights. Get that technique really good. Drop down, do some weights. 40 kilos for a couple of sets of five. Cool. Once you get over 200 kilos, it's a pop nice suit. We've got a massive scar there. Yeah. Oh. Throw it down, come on. Nice. <laughs> no, I still wouldn't have straps or anything on or a belt. When I, when I was deadlifting back then, I wouldn't even take it seriously for 300. Yeah. But then I started thinking about the jumps and that. Until yeah, I, was yeah, I knew I was really I strong when I was doing speed work for 300. Come on, Come on mate. All in now. <laughs> I squeeze through. I'm well done. That was nice, and you're keeping it really close to your body. It used to come away a lot, but it's really nice coming with your legs nice. But it's all done. <laughs> the way you were starting was a bit off. Well, I've never warm up properly, it's only up for a long time. I warm up terribly. I don't know why. It's just... but, but I've said to him, you should warm up the same as you're going to... Absolutely. That's something I'll tell you next time. Theory, like your first set should look exactly the same yeah. as your last set. Should, yeah. And your warm up sets are a chance to practice the movement. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people just sort of don't treat their warm-ups as very good, they just got to pull it. Yeah. You should be trying to, you like if you're practicing a serve in tennis. Yeah. Think of it the same way as that, you're practicing the movement exactly. Yeah. You're not like this from heavy, but you're trying to get good at the skill. For some reason, the light reflects off of you funny. It's just my glow. Off my, of your face. <laughs> my natural. I don't know if it's a, a contrast thing or what. Hold on. There you go, that's better. You got my good side now. Oh yeah, this is <laughs> I'm not breaking the camera now, no? No, no. no. <laughs> camera realises you're human now. <laughs> Let's go! Thinking no. how much I'm making, you know what I mean? I want to enjoy it. Yeah. <laughs> Serious doms. <laughs> you do a lot of miles at a show. Yeah. I started boxing. And um, last week I got punched in the face a few times. Because yeah. I don't want to get punched in the face and be on TV. Yeah. <laughs> That's nice. Best one. Two. Two. Good. Three. Good. 
ducking the ball. Touch your finger heels. Go good. Kind of good. Nice. Good work. Good work, that Jack. Just that middle rep. Give yourself all forward a little bit. Keep up on your toes. These, these repping, this is the way you learn good technique by that sort of medium weight repping. That's brilliant. Nice. It's really good. The thing is, he started on no weight, like he started like nothing. Yeah. And I'm not letting him go heavy, but it's just keeping it nice and light. And then when he does, when he does get older, if the form's there, you know yourself. Absolutely. The power will come as he gets older. If he wants to do it, he might not want to do it. Yeah. But it just teaches him good lifting habits That's and good, it. you know, he can cross over to other sports. With... The weight's irrelevant, isn't it? Yeah. It's my goal. Yeah. Learning it's my goal again. It's your goal again, mate. <laughs> we'll go on Friday, we'll set up, get the stuff out, paint everything, go have a bit of lunch, come back, do a bit more, and then We'll get there Saturday morning, just tweaking then. Whereas if you go in on a Saturday, it's like all oh, madness. And then you just get it set up and it's showtime. Whereas like if we've gone on a Friday, it's really nice. The audience is coming in and we're really chilled out. Because if anything's gone wrong, you've already sorted it. So it is what it is. Excellent. If you do it like the day before, you've got 12 hours to sort it at least. Exactly. Especially more pressure, I guess, if you've got to do it all on the same day. Yeah. yeah. Do you have a favourite arena that you use? Um, Leeds is good because we have done it so many times, like putting on an old set of shoes, you know what I mean? Glasgow was brilliant, it's really modern, loads of room. Sheffield's, Sheffield's great, he's got loads of room behind it. Royal Albert Hall is cool, but from a promoter's point of view, it's a bit of a pain because there's not, no room. And uh, everything's got to be, get brought up on a lift onto the main stage. So, but Royal Albert Hall's probably my favourite, as in... Visually? Yeah, and like, you know, for the audience and stuff like that. But then... For a smaller venue, the atmosphere in there is amazing. It's, it's, it's like nothing else. Yeah. And it's, it was built for sound, you know. Yeah, and acoustics. Yeah, and I mean, honestly, probably for us lot, the, the best one is either Sheffield or Glasgow. Yeah. For, for easiness. Loads of car parks with wagons and all this sort of thing, whereas... Leeds has got like, you can get like two wagons in, that's it, you know what I mean? It's just time. Well, quite Sheffield and Glasgow are probably yeah. the best for us. But again, to watch Albert Hall. Yeah. But to work, it's probably the hardest, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like 40 degrees under that one. <laughs> yeah. It was boiling, oh, wasn't it? Right, <laughs> well, that's given us a bit longer rest period. Let's yeah. <laughs> yeah. talk about something else. <laughs> I enjoyed that. <laughs> <laughs> trying to focus on the glutes and hamstrings oh, a little more. I won't be doing it, mate, but I like it. <laughs> <laughs> that bar, I think, has lifted, has had the more weight than any other bar because it's done about just about every World Deadlift Championships. How many, how many... Is that the bar you use for the... Yeah, so how many... You think of what pulls that's been done. That's mental. That's, that's, that's... So that, that's the bar that you use for the World Deadlift Championship? You use it every year, that bar, don't you? So that's the bar, and that's the this, this is the bar that has had what? How many thousand pound lifts six, just this I mean, year? I mean, it had seven, seven one thousand pound lifts this year. That's that mental. was just that was just at Manchester. So if you think about it over the years, the man lifted, <laughs> and who's actually lifted on that bar? Yeah. Pretty crazy, isn't it's it? a special bar. <laughs> yeah, it's got that bar's got some history to it. My, mem my member should be grateful, you know. I don't put it away, it is what it is, because it's such good quality, they don't bend as long yeah. as you use it for deadlifting. Yeah. What bar is it? It's, a, oh, it's an Oki bar made by Ricky Crane, cool. an ex powerlifter. Uh, so he made it for us. He made a powerlifting bar with weightlifting collars so it spins easy. So it's, a really, it's like a. They wouldn't usually put those collars in a. Yeah. It's like really, just really nice. 
um, and it's sort of bendy but not too bendy. There you go. So that is the bar. So that's the bar I put 435 on. Um, yeah, that's, that's it. When I got was that one and that one. We used that one, I think, for the first year, and then yeah. that ever since. There you go. Is, is this what Eddie pulled 500 on as well? No, because I gave him that one. Ah, okay. I gave him that one. Eddie, okay. Uh, because he, he, he needed that bar. <laughs> it, uh, let's be honest. <laughs> so I, I, yes. I, I, the weights, the weights are the weights we use. The Eleco weights. I've got those. But he wanted the bar. That's fair like, enough. That's, you understand that? Yeah. That was the first. Uh, it wasn't the first ever one, no. The first ever one was on the when Benny pulled 461. That was the first ever one that we did. We had Andy Bolton there, we had Eddie obviously up and coming then. Uh, who else pulled big there? Yourself, yeah. Terry, there's some big numbers. Terry, yeah. Was it Benny Magnuson? Uh, we actually had Ron O'Hanner there as well, yeah. all those years ago. Yeah. Uh, what, Martin Wilder? Martin he Wilder. Was pretty good, um, he did like 430, I think. Yeah, and he was getting better and better. He was, but then yeah. I think he got injured. Yeah. Uh, that yeah. happens to a lot, but. Yeah. Mark yeah, Felix. Yeah, Mark was always sort of 420, yeah. 425 then. Yeah. Mark's weird because he's better for reps than he is for a max weight. He's miles better for reps, yeah. He's, he's yeah. got that lockout strength, not quite that power for four. Yeah. If you give Mark sort of like, not not like the 350 that we use now, but you 300. Give like, or 320. Yeah. Like he's unbeatable on that lower, I mean it's not a lower weight, but like 300, 320. He just seems to have this like ability to just keep going. He yeah, doesn't kind strange. of burn out like the rest when of When you get a bit higher towards the 350, 360, it's still brilliant, but he can be beat yeah. by the bigger top end lifters. Yeah, yeah. But whereas I think you bring it down, how it was sort of like eight, nine years ago, 320 for reps. Yeah. I, I, I think even That's now. That's why he was so dominant, so. like world's strongest man back then. Yeah. When it was yeah. 300, 320, unbelievable. Yeah. That was good, mate. Well, nice we to we we'll keep talking. Eric's nearly put all the weights away. <laughs> <laughs> Talk a little bit longer. We'll get where we put it. Nicely done, madam. Right, guys, we're all done. Nice, quick deadlift session. Nothing too strenuous, thank goodness. But it's good to come back to him, you buddy. Busy day tomorrow. Obviously, yeah. you've got Britain's strongest man. It's an exciting one. You've got world's strongest man, Europe's strongest man. The last two defending Britain's strongest man. It's going to be hell of a show. Give me a winner. Well, the guys have been down to train. They all get an open invite train on the kit, especially the British guys. And uh, the ones that are, that are organised come down. I've had Mark Felix down, I've had Hicksy, we've had, we've had Bish down. I'm not going to pick a winner, but <laughs> all I'm going to say is the Stoltmans are on form this year, as we know. We've got world's strongest man in Europe. Uh, Bish is unbelievable. He's getting better every year. And he's been down to train. He looks awesome on the events. I think people probably underestimating Graham Hicks a little bit I think so. because the events are very good for him and he's actually very positive he's on fire at the minute I think people that might be underestimating him and I'm putting him on the podium you know he's probably not the obvious one but I think Graham could 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 win it yeah I think I think it's going to be a battle between those four yeah I definitely. think the battle for fifth will be really good as well actually. definitely yeah it's going to be an amazing show make sure you guys tune in Daz thanks for having me up it's, no um, it's been good to train again Brilliant. Thanks, well, um, have a great Brilliant. weekend cheers, cheers. man while you're here guys, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my awesome strength content.